What's up guys, I'm Jeff, the founder of Worldwide Cyclery and I just built up a new bike and I don't know if you care, but I'm gonna tell you all about it. All right, so when I say I built up a new bike, that's actually not necessarily true. Uh, I didn't build it. I unfortunately don't have the time to build my own bikes anymore. And Liam built this thing. He's the head mechanic in our California shop and he's amazing. This is Liam. <laughs> So I wanted to go over the parts that I put on this thing just to let you guys know sort of what I'm riding and why I chose to ride it. Uh, previously, I was riding a Transition Smuggler, an alloy one. You can see that here. Uh, I hopped on the Transition bandwagon as soon as they came out with SBG because I was really excited about their new geometry and what that was all about. And I've always been a fan of long bikes and slack bikes because I you know, formerly rode downhill for a long time and I love that feel of a bike. And at one point, I don't know if you've seen the video, but I actually cut the seat tube on one of these bikes, a Yeti 4.5, uh, an XL. So I basically made it the size of a large seat tube. You can check that video out. Uh, that was a, a crazy project and I'm never gonna cut a seat tube again because it was a total hassle. So this is a 2018 Yeti SB 4.5 and it is a size large frame. Uh, it's still a size up. I mean, I'm technically would be a size medium. I'm a short guy at 5'8", so I uh, should be on a medium, but I prefer a large. I just like longer wheelbases. So uh, I can fit on the large, at least with a 125 dropper post on this thing. And why I went to the 4.5? So you're probably wondering, uh, since Yeti just released the SB130 and the SB150, and I've ridden them both, why did I just build up a 4.5? Well, the uh, 130 and the 150 are still kind of just dwindling in as far as stock levels go. And uh, I've ridden them both. They're both amazing bikes, but I actually really still love the 4.5. And where I live, well, where I spend most of my time in California, I feel like this is just the perfect bike, right? It's right in between sort of the SB100 and the SB130. Just that mid-travel 29er segment is one of my favorite type of bikes to ride for where I ride most often. And uh, when this thing came out, I built one up right away and pretty much fell in love with it. I more or less change bikes about every six to eight months. Uh, just because I like to ride different stuff, I like to ride different brands that we carry and uh, and just try new things. But I have you know gravitated back. I think this is my yeah this is actually my third four five. So I built up a large when they first came out. Um, I can't even remember what I had after that. Then I built up that XL four five, cut the C tube. Uh, then I had that transition smuggler, and now I'm back on a large four five. Um, stoked on this thing. We did a, a couple unique things to it. I mean, right off the bat, you can tell. So I did a. Uh, custom painted lowers for the Fox 34, and we more or less just took a Performance Elite uh, 34 140 fork and custom painted the lowers turquoise, which was kind of a nightmare to do. And then we went to Slick Graphics to get graphics put on there. So ended up looking really nice. We did a little uh, spray painting to make the knobs black on there so it looks nice and stealth. And Industry 9 Enduro 305 wheels, you can tell up front, because I did the turquoise lowers, I wanted to do a black hub up there, but then I do have a turquoise rear hub in the back, um, and then just four turquoise spokes going on there. So it's a little flashy. Um, I guess it's probably a flashy bike, but maybe not like Santa Cruz flashy, but it definitely is a little bit flashy. I enjoy that look. Uh, it is an understated just black frame, so I wanted to do something that looked good, so that's why I did some fancy i9 wheels, and I did the fork. Uh, aside from that, so I have a Fender. I think this is what? Synchros Fender. Uh, Raymond, guy who's sitting right there, showing an image of Raymond. He got this Fender at Sea Otter, and uh, they're awesome. They bolt onto the forks. It's, for whatever reason, impossible to get in the U.S. Uh, Raymond got them at Sea Otter. I like it. I think it looks cool. It probably doesn't really do much, and I never really ride in the mud anyway, so uh, it's really more just for looks than anything else. Max's tires. This is my current favorite setup. Uh, DHR2 wide trail uh, 2.4 in the front and then I have a 2.4 wide trail recon in the back. Um, both of them are 3C. Loving Maxxis right now. Uh, man, there's a lot of good tires out there right now. If I wasn't on this, I'd probably be testing out some Michelin thing or testing out some WTB tires. I like those as well. E13 has some interesting stuff, but I sort of always end up gravitating back towards Maxxis tires. Uh, Cane Creek 110 series headset. Uh, I have a 32 millimeter turbine stem, next SL bars, so race face setup for bars and stem there, guide RSC brakes, I really like those. Um, probably if you haven't noticed already, I'm not running an Eagle drivetrain. So 
I, I love Eagle and I've ridden plenty of bikes with it. I don't really like it on my own bikes, uh, which is kind of a stupid move on my part because nobody wants to buy a bike without Eagle right now. And so when I go to sell this thing, people are gonna ask me like, hey, can I just upgrade it to Eagle immediately? I still really like the 11 speed stuff. I don't really do much more than like two hour rides at the most. And uh, I feel like I'm in good enough shape to sort of run this setup with a 32 oval in the front and then just the 11 speed cassette in the back. And I like it, it's lighter than Eagle. Um, yeah, it's outdated, it's SRAM's older drivetrain, but it does everything I need it to do. And, and I like just sort of that smaller look of the cassette and the smaller derailleur. I just think it looks better and it works perfect. When SRAM came out with 1x11 and I rode it, I fell in love and I really enjoyed it. And again, I just didn't feel like I needed Eagle. I didn't feel like I needed to have any more top speed. I didn't feel like I needed to have any more uh, low gear for climbing. So I just stuck with this and, and never really had the desire to, to move over to Eagle, although I've ridden with Eagle and it's phenomenal. Really the only advantage I see to it, it has a way bigger gear range. So if I was racing, I would ride Eagle for sure. But because this is just my general trail bike, this drivetrain does everything I need it to, and I really enjoy it. So, uh, next are carbon cranks, race face, Crank Brothers mount, e-pedals. Uh, again, those are some of my favorite things. I wanted to do next SL cranks from race face, but next R was all that was in stock at the time, so went with those instead. A uh, little bit heavier, but also a little bit stiffer and stronger than the next SL ones. Um, the rear shock is kind of unique, so that's a performance elite. Fox float rear shock, and they actually don't sell those aftermarket. So thank you to Steve at Fox for helping me get that shock. It looks awesome. I really wanted to do sort of the matchy matchy thing. And if I had had black stanchions up front, I wanted to do the same look on the back. Uh, those graphics are from Slick as well. So that shock is awesome. I'm stoked on that because these, these bikes come with the Kashima one out of the box and I just wanted the black stanchion and basically Performance Elite is the same thing minus Kashima and I like the look of it better. So that's why, that's the story behind that rear shock and again, painted a few things black there just to uh, make it look cooler. One thing that is interesting, for the shock mounting hardware, I actually went with offset bushings on both ends. And the reason I did that is to just slacken out the head angle. So. Uh, I love the Geo, the 4.5, but I do feel like it could be slacker, and that's what I accomplished with the offset shock bushings. Um, those ones that I have on here were custom made by a, a local friend of ours, uh, Corey Neuer. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Um, that's what's going on with the rear shock. Just gives the thing a little bit lower BB, a little bit slacker, but still retains the same amount of rear travel. Uh, dropper post, KS LEV CI, it's the carbon version. I really just wanted to weight weenie it out. I wanted to keep this thing really light. I, you know, most people are caring less and less about weight, but I still get made fun of as kind of a weight weenie and I like my bikes to be as light as I can get them without uh, compromising their performance too much. So that's why I went with the carbon dropper post. Um, so far so good. I love the KS post. Uh, obviously the one up is a really nice one as well. And so is the Fox transfer. Those are probably the last one I have is a Fox transfer. But again, I wanted to just go super light on this one and we happen to have this. So KS carbon post. And uh, man, that's, that's pretty much it. Let me know, oh yeah, Physique Saddle. I don't even know what model that is. I just think it looks cool. I'm not like a picky saddle guy because, I don't know, I'm young and I don't have testicular issues when I ride my bike for hours on end. So I, I just pick whatever seat looks good. Uh, and I like the look of the Physique ones. Oh, and it's carbon rail, so it's light. Uh, ODI grips, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that pretty much sums up everything. Let us know in the comments, what do you guys think of this thing? Uh, do you think I'm gonna like it versus that transition? Do you think I'm a complete and utter moron for not going to an SB130 or SB150? Uh, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next one.